Do you ever wonder why guys seem the most interested in you when they first meet you? And then after a while, they just seem to be completely disinterested in you. Isn't it frustrating to feel like all of a sudden you don't matter anymore and you don't even feel like you've done anything that different? Here's the truth. Guys are losing interest in you because they're losing respect for you. And it only has to do with a few small things that you probably didn't even realize you were doing. Which is why on today's show, we're going to be discussing seven ways men lose respect for you you that way you never make the mistake of presenting yourself the wrong way again and you can finally demand the respect and the value that you feel is rightfully yours. Number one, men lose respect for you when they realize that you're dealing with bums. I'm gonna tell you some truths here and all of these truths are not gonna feel good. If I am a man and I start dating you and seeing you, right? I think I'm the man, the best man. So my belief of you is that if you're gonna get with me and I'm the most amazing, beautiful, handsome, sexiest man in all the land, then you have to be the most amazing, beautiful, stunning woman in all the land as well. Because we feel like if you allow bums into your life, that speaks to the fact that you probably aren't the dream girl. You're probably more like the average girl. You're probably more like the girl that nobody really wants. Okay. If you've been in a situation where you have made the mistake of allowing a guy or an ex to mistreat you and then just stay and continue mistreating you and he continues staying and you let that go on for a long period of time, I want you, and I'm not saying you have to lie, but when you go into your new relationship, I want you to present it as if that is something that would never even happen ever again. And now that you are the person that you are, he couldn't dream of getting an opportunity with you. He couldn't even kiss your feet. That that guy, uh, after treating you like that, will never, ever, ever be able to speak to you or contact you ever again, okay? You need to make it very clear to men when you're meeting them and when you're dating them that bums do not have access to you in any way, shape, or form. The only type of men that have access to you are the men who stand up straight, have their stuff together and know how to approach you. It's actually very, very important because when I lose respect for you, because I feel like you allow bums into your life and you allow bums especially to mistreat you in your life, well, then that tells me if I deal with you and I feel like I'm way better than those bum men that you allow to mistreat you, it tells me that I should be mistreating you even worse than the men who were bums were mistreating you. Number two, Number two is, is being easy. We had to address this at some point in the show. I'm going to tell you a quote that my friend posted on his close friend story, and it really resonated with me along with all my other guy friends. The quote goes, sleeping with a girl that you really like on the first night is like unaliving your dog. You might not understand it because you're a woman. That's fine. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to break it down and explain it to you from a man's perspective. As a man, we cannot fight the physical and emotional disappointment we feel after we get access to you in a way that should have taken a lot of work, effort, and consistency very quickly, just like that with not a lot of effort. When you really like a girl, you feel like the, there should be a challenge. You feel like there should be obstacles. You want to feel like she's a prize, but it is impossible to feel like she's a prize when you don't actually end up putting any work in to get her in the end. Much like having to put your dog down would be disappointing, even though your dog is still living, even though your dog is still breathing, even though technically, right, this isn't the end, you know that you must do it in order to just uh, 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 put him out of his misery. And the, and the disappointment and the pain that you feel is the same pain and disappointment we feel when we sleep with you, hoping and praying that you would challenge us and just make it harder for us. The thing about guys that you have to understand is they will actively try to sleep with you as quickly as possible while also acknowledging that if they actually are able to accomplish sleeping with you as quickly as possible, it's a disappointment to them. They're almost like waiting on you to tell them no and waiting on you to pace them that they can say, oh, okay, I'm okay, I'll wait. I actually value you and I respect you, so I'm gonna wait. Number three, which is gonna be you dropping everything. I need us to be absolutely very, very crystal clear on this. When a guy picks up the phone, right? He's been drinking. I, I just finished at the club and I was just thinking about you and I was just thinking how me and you, we should have this heart to heart, yo. I know we haven't spoken so long, girl, but me and you, you know how we go way back. And you, you remember how I used to go way back inside your stomach, girl. And I know even though right now it's about 2.30 a.m., I'm just leaving the spot. But you know, I could really slide by your apartment and if I just pull up right 
right now, maybe we just have this heart to heart and we could go way, 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 way back again. You say yes. And he comes over and he rearranges your guts and then he's gone again for the next three or four weeks. When he calls you at 2.30 a.m. and you pick up the phone when you're in a dead sleep or you sacrifice going to work, you take a shift off or you call in sick just to spend time with him, guys lose respect for you. Because all that teaches them is that whenever he wants access to you, he will get access to you. So what do you think he's thinking in his mind when he doesn't need access to you? He's thinking nothing. And they will treat you like DoorDash. The same way when you're hungry, you pick up the phone and you open the DoorDash app and you order you some food and it comes to your house in 45 minutes or less. That is you. Actually, you guys are like DoorDash Express because you come even earlier than 45 minutes. Whenever he's not hungry for you, aged up, horned up for you, he's not going to open your app. Do you ever scroll through DoorDash when you're not hungry? Huh, I wonder if they got the Dragon Roll buy one, get one free today, even though I'm not gonna order one, I just wanna see if they got it today. Number four, having no direction. Okay, this is gonna sound really weird for some of you because some of you are gonna feel like, well, you know, I'm a girl, so my job is to just be the woman, just be the wife and only worry about that. I don't need to be worried about all these other things. Okay, I need you to understand here. Some of you get lost in the idea that your only purpose here in this life is to be someone's wife or girlfriend. So that's all you spend your time thinking about. That's all you spend your time worrying about. And you you don't even you don't even know yourself. You don't know what you like, you don't know what you want, you don't know what you find interesting or fascinating. You don't know anything about yourself. All you know is when a guy comes along and a boy comes along that I like, I want to do everything I possibly can to please him. Do you want a handy? Do you want me to use my feet? Do you want, do you want to suck up? Do, can I suck on your toes? You end up being directionless. And the thing about it is even when guys meet you, they can spot if you're directionless. Now, I'm not saying that each and every one of you has to be a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, but you should, you should like have some direction of like some goals and some aspirations of things that you want for yourself outside of just being someone's girlfriend or wife. That's not a crime. Something small like, you know, I really like throwing events. I would love to be like a wedding planner someday or something. It doesn't have to be, you know, I want to make a million dollars. I want to change the world. I want to solve world hunger. It, it, it can be something small that you're passionate about, that you care about, that's important to you, that you, you want to work towards. That's not a crime. And it actually makes you look like someone who has direction, has goals like you're waking up for something every day it puts guys in a very humbling position where they never come into your life feeling like if it wasn't for me bestowing my godly amazing presence on your life it would be boring uninteresting and lifeless when guys come into you your life and come into the relationship with that belief they will mistreat you and disrespect you they will also find you very uninteresting and see when he believes that this is an opportunity for you he's going to treat it like this is an opportunity for you so he's going to be asking you let's see what you got do back flips for me do front flips for me open those legs wide put your legs behind your back let's see if you can do better than all the other girls but number five is being an empty shell i know that it sounds very strange an individual has their own individual thoughts opinions and perspective that might not always be in agreement with mine the problem is for some of you you get into a state where you're so hyper fixated on how to get him to like you that you think if i say nothing and do nothing that's against him. If I never have an opinion that's against his opinion, if I always do my absolute best to be as agreeable as possible, then he will like me more and be more interested in me. In reality, he loses respect for you and subsequently he loses interest in you because you're very boring and you're not even like an individual. Being with you is like being with the parrot. Being with you is like being with the shadow. Being with you is like being with an empty shell. You're only a human being in the flesh Everything on the inside is absolutely empty and whatever I want to project onto it, that's whatever it will be on the inside. That doesn't spark guys' desire to chase and pursue after you. Guys can still feel and sense that you're trying to do that, that you're trying so hard to be likable. You're trying so hard to be whatever he wants you to be at any point. Think whatever he wants you to think at any point. It becomes exhausting even for them because when you begin to become okay with having your own genuine opinions and thoughts and feelings and presenting them and communicating them, regardless of how someone else feels, you begin to become more confident in your own feelings about things. What I mean by that is you start to understand what your own needs are and wants are, 
and you speak them based on the fact that those are your own needs and wants and you stop caring hey I wonder if you won't like the fact that these are my needs and wants. It doesn't matter what you think about my needs and wants. They're my needs and wants. Number six, that you can't cut people off. This one, for some of you, this will really hit home. Okay, so I actually want you to be paying close attention. Okay, uh, if you're on the toilet, stand up straight, stop pooping. Because in the process of me learning about you and learning about specifically your last uh, re relationships, it will become very obvious that you have ongoing things. Maybe you're not romantic with these people. It's like every relationship or ex or talking stage that you've ever had, it just lingering. They can still kind of reach out to you every now and again, and you still kind of see each other here and there, and maybe you chat, maybe you, you check up on each other. Maybe you're part of the same friend group, so you kind of spend time together, but it's not really one-on-one -on -one time. You make yourself look like such an idiot. If you can acknowledge that a situation hasn't worked out, you can acknowledge why it didn't work out. And you can acknowledge that this situation probably isn't going anywhere in the future. What reason do you have to keep those people, specifically those men in your life around? It tells me you're very weak minded. It tells me you have no willpower. It tells me you have no ability to stand up for yourself. Subsequently, I lose respect for you because I don't feel like you even have respect for yourself. You don't even think of yourself as valuable enough that if someone mistreats you, that that's it for them. And when you look that weak to men, they will never be able to have any type of respect for you. And subsequently, they will never be able to have any type of interest in you. And number seven is you have no individuality. When you get into a space where your whole life is just whoever you're in a relationship with, you're going to feel like you can't do anything in your life unless you have that person with you. Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with enjoying spending time with your partner. There's nothing wrong with enjoying being around your partner and feeling that happiness and that boost and that joy when they're there. I'm not saying that that's a crime and you shouldn't want that. What I am saying, though, is there's a difference between that and not having any sort of individuality where you don't feel like anything is worth doing if you're if that guy is not there or around you or with you and that you have no desire to do anything in your life for yourself or with anyone else unless that guy is there with you because the thing about it is the guys are still going to want to have their boys night the guys are still going to uh, want to do things that don't always have to do with you and that's not a crime but the problem lies when your whole entire life revolves around him you will become so offended and bent out of shape anytime your partner or that guy wants to have any sort of individuality outside of you. This is where we get into the realm of like, there's no reason why I should take you more than an hour to text me back. And you feel offended that he would ever even dream of doing something for himself that he would not be able to respond to you within a couple of hours. If I feel like as a man, you're going to have a breakdown if I even want to do anything for myself, how am I supposed to see you as an individual? How am I supposed to respect your own individual thoughts and opinions? But if I don't see you as an individual and then you go along trying to set boundaries, I'm not going to actually take those boundaries seriously because I don't even see you as an, as an individual who can actually have thoughts uh, outside of me or outside of what I want. That you could say, hey, uh, don't do this, don't do that, I don't appreciate it. What do you mean you don't? You appreciate anything I'll do for you. You appreciate anything I'll do, good or bad, to you. Because you just want me. 